All right. Hello. Welcome back to the Quality Matters Daily Dive brought to you by Texas Quality Assurance, where quality management gets simplified. So today we're talking about a topic that there's just no shortage of opinions on, but it really doesn't need to be as complex as it often sounds. And we are talking about non-conformance reports and corrective action reports. The fact is, and we're still many years into the 2015 edition of the ISO 9001 standard. <clears throat> but really, it looks like they killed NCRs and CARs. But anyone in quality knows these are some of the most fundamental tools we have at our disposal, our non-conformance report and our corrective action report. So let's dig in and see, did they actually kill the NCR and CAR? Or do we just need to dive a little bit deeper, understand it? Now, prior to the 2015 edition of the standard, we had a fairly clear distinction between an NCR and a CAR. Maybe it didn't quite call them that so explicitly, but we had non-conformance reporting, we had corrective action reporting. Pretty simple. And you might be asking, well, Kyle, like, what the heck is the difference anyways? Why do we even care about this? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Non-conformance report is documenting we had a non-conforming output. We expected it to go one way, and it, in fact, went another. Okay, document it. Doesn't mean anyone's in trouble. Doesn't necessarily mean anyone messed up. It just means something didn't go the way that we expected it to go. Okay. Now, not all of these issues require corrective action. And, and the key word there, action, is an absolutely, absolutely critical word. So if we take a look at uh, the you know dimming cycle, the PDCA uh, cycle, the plan, do, check, act. An action requires, uh, in the sense of a corrective action, requires a change to the management system. So let's give a quick example. Let's say that we have a supplier that's uh, continually either late on our deliveries or um, maybe more common, doesn't send the packing list with everything. Okay, well, we kind of need that packing list that manifest to say, did we receive what we ordered? Do we have the evidence for it? Okay, well, if they're repeatedly not sending that over, then we might want to issue a corrective action and say, we're going to take some action. We're going to follow up with a supplier. We're going to make certain that they agree to XYZ terms. We're going to get the documentation and move, and move forward. But how do you know it's a re repeat issue? Well, that's where a non-conformance report comes in handy. Non-conformance report allows you to say on a case-by-case -case basis, hey, this happened today. Okay, well, what'd you do about it? Eh, left it as is. We're just recording it. Hey, it happened again. What'd you do about it? Eh, we left it as is. We're recording, about, recording it. What happened again? Hey, what'd you do about it? We told the delivery driver, he better send this next time. Okay, cool. And you do this a handful of times and you can build a trend. Once you have that trend, well, now you've got everything you need for a corrective action. But ISO 9001, the 2015 edition, the standard, doesn't seem to make it that clear and concise at first read. In fact, they seem to make it appear as if everything should be a corrective action. And you want to talk about opening up a can of worms? I mean, we stress and stress and stress at Texas Quality Assurance that you need to document as many nonconformities as is reasonable with the minimum amount of paperwork because you never know when all these dots are going to start to connect. So if you don't collect your dots, you ain't got no chance of connecting them. Well, a corrective action has a lot of requirements to it. And so do we really want to burden ourselves with more time spent on paperwork than correcting the issue? I mean, that's kind of the chief reason people complain about a quality management system is they're like, hey, Kyle, I spend more time on paperwork than I do the actual job. Well, when that's an issue, time out. We're doing something wrong. We need to find a better way to do it. So let's jump over to the standard and see exactly what standard says we ought to do. So let's take a look here. Let me get the screen a little bit better. There we go. So first, let's take a look at the ISO 9000. Now, this is something that many of you may not even be aware exists. Um, it is not auditable. You cannot be certified to ISO 9000. You can be certified to ISO 9001. But let's look at ISO 9000. So ISO 9000 is the fundamental vocabulary. So let's just do a quick search. NCR. Uh, anytime the word increase shows up, NCR shows up. But uh, we don't have an NCR. Well, let's look up car. Do we have a car in here? Only when it shows up in like the word carried. Oh, that's not helpful. How about corrective action? Well, we've got corrective action. What about, and that's in 3.12.2. So 
So corrective action is an action to eliminate, here's a keyword, cause of a nonconformity and prevent its recurrence. So if your goal is not to eliminate the cause of the nonconformity, prevent the reoccurrence and show data for crying out loud, show some evidence that you are successful at preventing the reoccurrence, then you don't have a corrective action. If that's what you are doing, you do have a corrective action. Now, again, you might be saying, what the heck is the difference? Why do I care? Well, because a corrective action could take a lot of time processing paperwork and an NCR could take 30 seconds. So do you want to spend an hour, two hours, four hours on it or 30 seconds? I think the answer is pretty obvious. The problem is there are so many vastly different ways of tracking non-conforming outputs that the folks, when they rewrote the standard, pretty much decided to remain silent on the methods there. The corrective action is the key piece for the management system because we're making a change to the management system. Okay, in any case, so that's the definitions here. Let's see if we have a non-conformance report. No. What about non-conformity? Well, we'll take a look there. Preventative action has a potential non-conformity. So a whole other discussion we'll do another video on, but corrective action versus preventative action well, fun with that. But for today's sake, it's no nonconformity, potential nonconformity. But we just don't have anything for a nonconformity report in here, as, as you can see, kind of flipping through. All right. So that means we kind of have to make a decision of our own. Well, it's not a decision to make, not an issue to make a decision of our own. That's, that's what a management system is, is it helps guide us to making those good business decisions and documenting them in such a way that it's repeatable. That sounds great. So our recommendation is still to maintain a non-conformance report and a corrective action report as two separate reports. And I'll show you the justification in the standard. So let's take a look here. As you probably already guessed in the show notes, we talk a little bit about it. So let's take a look at the ISO 9001 standard here. Woo, let's go to the table of contents. Might not want to scroll so fast as I did. Probably make some of you all see sick, especially if you're watching this on a uh, on a cell phone. Um, but what we have is we have under our operations clause, mind you, operations is part of that due process in the PDCA cycle. We have our control of non-conforming outputs. That sounded more like what I'm wanting to look for. In fact, I actually prefer the updated language to some degree here in the 15th edition of the standard from previous standards, because we're talking specifically about non-conforming outputs. A non-conforming output could be non-conforming product. Non-conforming output could be someone didn't fill out their purchase order properly, and it's causing accounting a headache. And I think we all know if purchase order is not filled out, prop, purchase order request isn't filled out properly, you're not getting your materials in time. You don't get your materials in time. Now we've got late delivery. Check out our on-time delivery episode from last week. So. Clause 8.7 is where we get our requirements for a non-conformance reports. Now, confusingly enough, I hate the verbiage here, Clause 10.2, under the improvement section of the standard improvement clause, um, which is part of the act in the PDCA cycle, is where we have our non-conformity and corrective actions. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, and they would solve so many problems if non-conformity had been excluded from the title here, but it wasn't, I didn't write the standard, what can you do? But this is where we get our requirements for a corrective action. So we're gonna begin with 8.7, because if we think about it, most corrective actions ought to have either a single non-conformance at the root or a trend of non-conformances at the root. The exception would be when we talk about the world of preventative actions. And again, we'll discuss that in a future video. So let's talk about control of non-conforming outputs. I really love the fact they use the term outputs here. So this, in theory, can be expanded to any process within your business, whether directly under the scope of 9001 or not. It's a fantastic data gathering system. So what it says here is that the organization shall ensure that the outputs um, that do not conform to their requirements are identified and controlled to prevent their unintended delivery or use. Okay. Pretty straightforward. If we mess on up on something, we want to identify it ahead of time as so that it never gets to the customer or whether it's our customer, customer or internal customer. We just want to make sure it never gets to where it's supposed to go 
until it's right. Sounds like good business practice. Organization shall take appropriate action based on the nature of nonconformity and its effect on the conformity of products and services. Okay, so who gets to make the decision? The organization. Management decides and determines and dictates it. So this is where we need to have a procedure for nonconforming outputs to outline this process, but this is where it comes from. This shall also apply to nonconforming products and services detected after delivery of products. Okay, so cool. We deliver something to a customer. They come back and say, hey, the, it's, it's out of spec here, or we're missing some widget or some add-on to it, or whatever the case may be. Those are all opportunity for nonconformance reporting. We'll get to corrective action later. Corrective action means we have to make some decisions first. How can you make a decision until you collect the data? All right, so this is why NCRs come first. The organization shall deal with non-conforming outputs in one or more of the following ways. Correction. Keep in mind, we use the word correction, not corrective action. Huge difference there. Segregation, containment, or return. Okay, so this is often, we call it quarantine. Inform the customer. Okay. Or obtain authorization for acceptance under concession. I talk about leave ads, it's a lot. This is where we get it from. Um, if you've ever worked with Texas Quality Assurance, you'll find that when we go through our consulting process for our non-conformance reports, we usually give some, some fairly simple disposition codes. So we have rework, effectively, what we're looking at here for correction. Okay. Um, we have quarantine, pretty straightforward. Um, inform the customer often falls under that rework uh, category or what we also call um, accept under concession. So that inform the customer could branch into either one of these two. We could either rework it as a correction or we could accept it with concession because the customer said, hey, you know what? It's not a deal, but that's going to work for us after all. Keep moving. Make sure you get documentation of it. That goes without saying, but maybe not. <laughs> um, or obtain authorization for acceptance under concession. Now, this could be both internal, external. That's kind of what we say is uh, leave as is. is we've decided we're just going to leave this the way it is and move forward. Um, but this describes our non-conformance reports. You'll find here that there is in clause 8.7, there is nothing for preventing future occurrence. There is nothing in here requiring a change in documented information. So the records we have to retain means we have to describe the nonconformity, describe any action taken, which those actions are addressed, addressed here. Um, were I to rewrite the standard, I probably would not use the word action here because we all know that's a kind of key quality word, but you know, we, we get where they're coming from here. So we want to describe the immediate action taken might be a better way to describe it. Describe any concessions obtained and identify as the authority deciding the action. I would say immediate action or mitigation in respect to the nonconformity. So that's where you have an NCR, you have a disposition, you have a sign off done. Does not take much time to complete. You probably want to complete 10 to 20 of these per corrective action. We want to do way more data gathering than changing of our management system. This, uh, I, The reason I say this is, again, if we go back to dimming, and Duran talks about it in a little bit different terms, but dimming calls this tampering. So basically, if we are taking each instance of a nonconformity and assuming each instance individually is preventable, we're tampering with the system. And you're going to make so many changes and tweaks and last minute modifications that a you confuse and drive people bonkers and b you're going to wind up with a very complicated convoluted system over time and people really aren't going to know why these requirements are in place you're going to spend your days putting out fires it's not fun collect data collect data collect data collect data make educated decisions so once we're ready to make that educated decision we're going to move down to creating a corrective action. And this is coming from clause 10.2, nonconformity and corrective action. When a nonconformity occurs, including arising from complaints, the organization shall react to the norm, to the nonconformity as applicable. See, this is where we're pretty much describing what I talked about in the nonconformance reporting section of 8.7. Again, they call it act. React would be a much better word there react to the nonconformity and as applicable, take any action to control or correct it and deal with the consequences. This is our immediate containment. So at this point, it is true. A nonconformance and corrective action are indistinguishable up to this point only. 
Then evaluate the need for action to eliminate the cause or causes, root cause analysis of the nonconformity to make sure it doesn't occur elsewhere. We saw this straight from the definition over here in ISO 9000. Okay. So we want to analyze the nonconformity, determine the cause, and determine if similar nonconformities exist or could potentially occur. Well, folks, if we're already gathering data on a regular basis about our nonconformities, well, then we've already done number three. And then we can say, okay, well, what other times have we had this issue occur? Let's go check the database and see. Awesome. We want to implement any action as needed. We often reference this as our correction phase. We want to review the effectiveness of any corrections taken. Oftentimes, we call this uh, validation of changes or verification of effectiveness of the corrective action. It's worded differently depending on the organization, the work you do. But ultimately, if we put a change in place, I mean, let's just think for a second. Doesn't it make sense we want to evaluate if it was a good change or a bad change? This is how you avoid that trap of tampering. Analyze or collect, analyze lots of data, take small, meaningful actions, review the effectiveness of the action, and then close it out. But we'll go down a little bit further here before we finish up. So it says that we want to update risk and opportunities. Whole other topic to talk to there. We do recommend taking the results of your corrective actions and updating those for part of a risk register, especially prior to the management review and showing that, hey, these are additional business risks we encountered and this is how we reacted to them. Um, so really good data to keep on hand as well. And make changes to the quality management system. The if necessary part there is almost redundant. If you're taking an action, you are making a change. So if we're taking a corrective action, we are nearly exclusively 100% of the time making some change to the management system. It may be as simple as adding an additional checkbox to a form, but that one additional checkbox is a change to our management system and therefore ought to be tracked and managed. So if you're updating any documentation in your management system, nine times out of 10, you really ought to have a corrective action backing up why you made that change and verifying that it was a good change. So the corrective actions, in this case, corrective action reports, shall be appropriate to the effects of the nonconformity encountered. And the organization has to keep documentation of this. So it's not so complicated as um, you could easily be led to believe. But ISO did not kill our NCR or our corrective action, but they did open up the door for wider interpretation by each individual organization. So on the surface, that, that feels a little more frustrating, feels more daunting, a little more difficult for us to handle, but it gives you the opportunity to run your business in the way that makes most sense for your people and your process. So let's use this. Let's use this ambiguity. Let's use this kind of lack of clarity to our benefit. But ultimately, it's still the same process we've been looking for. So I hope this uh, is helpful. hope this makes a little bit of sense to you. Um, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to uh, reach out, contact me, comment on the video below. To be clear, we are live streaming these daily dive videos on LinkedIn and Rumble. So if you want to access our catalog of these, be sure to go over to Rumble. Make sure that the uh, information is in the comments below. But thanks for uh, joining us, and I hope to hear from you soon.